So just having a look at these management factors, and it's just some things that you should be considering in your alignment. The very first one is that companies had unintegrated IS that supported only the activities of individual functional areas. So this is a historic view. That was the world according to back then. Okay. <coughs> and with having an integrated IS that supported activities at an individual functional area, it is very difficult for them to translate. And they'd have to have so many management meetings in order to take all of these different views and try to quickly put all of these pieces into the puzzle to see where they're at, at now, where they're headed to, and to create the action plans to enable that to move forward. Okay, so again, a financial manager or a, or a CFO, he'd be looking just at what he had access and visibility to. And the person involved with planning would only have access to what his limited scope and visibility was. Okay. The second is, <coughs> this created a scenario where there were silos of information which limited the exchange of, of, of information. And you know what? This is human nature. When you look at companies, you tend to find that they've got functional, we call them streams, but they're actually silos. So you go, well, this is the person who's involved in that silo, and he looks after finance and all those specific functions. The next one is involved planning. The next one is involved with sales. The next one's involved with procurement. And they're limited in what they do. What they do is they specialize in that silo. They ensure that that silo operationally is fantastic. So here's an example. I'm a, I'm, I'm a procurement specialist and I've been tasked that I've got to renegotiate my supplier contracts, my terms and agreements with them. So I go to supplier one and I say, supplier one, look, I'm actually looking for to not pay you, not pay you on 30 days, but to extend that to 60 days because I've been tasked, siloed, to look at extending payment terms back to suppliers to facilitate the improvement of cash flow within my organization. So the supplier one turns around to me and they says, I can facilitate that, but you know how you've been demanding that we have to absolutely deliver on five days. When you place an order, we've got five days to deliver those goods to you. I can extend it to 60 days, but what I want is the flexibility to now have 10 days of delivery time and not five. So this, the procurement specialist will say, the person responsible for procurement will say, I've done my job. I've achieved what the business asked me to do. But can you imagine the implications of that and how it spills through to planning? And the broader implications to sales. And finally, the impact on finance. So this is what we are saying. In order to do this, this is vertical. This is what's called vertical alignment. You also need what is called horizontal alignment. And horizontal alignment spans across those silos in the business. And this is where the alignment occurs with the corporate strategy of an organization. So in the past, what companies used to do is they used to do a lot of ERP selections based on features and functions. In procurement, do you have the ability to pay uh, suppliers on 30, 60, 90 days? If the answer is yes, you tick the box on that feature. So they did a, v a feature selection on each of these silos. Nowadays, what organizations are doing is they're saying we are expecting the ERP system to assist us with the horizontal integration of the silos in, in my business. So that is, for procurement, they understand what their roles are, but it's got to be in, first and foremost incongruent with the corporate strategy. So in order to do this, <coughs> the best way that an ERP system can do that is to provide that visible scope across all of the different, all of the different functional areas. Okay? So 
A functional model has led to a top-heavy and overstaffed of organizations. So this is a functional model, the silos. And overstaffed organizations are incapable of reacting quickly to change. Why? Because they are entrenched in those processes that monitor them on a functional level only. Okay? So companies have increasingly been shifting their focus from a functional focus to a business process function, uh, to a business process focus. Okay. So, how, so we mentioned in the previous slide, we said, well, we understand that ERP systems need to continually to evolve to serve the needs of the marketplace. And the marketplace is saying, we have not attained our value that we expected from ERP systems. So ERP systems now have shifted and they've said, okay, we've heard you. So we are going to bring out an extra module. And in CISPRO's case, it's called SPM, CISPRO Process Modeling. And its aim is to fundamentally answer the question of, first and foremost, we will identify what your company needs. System agnostic, we're not interested in system at first. Design the horizontal fit across your business. Unpack it into the functional areas required in support of that horizontal fit. And then align the software in support of that. So it's looking at it a different way. And by doing that, we can understand the true value and the value realization. And it allows companies, when they're unpacking this process, to question with what they were doing previously is in fact valid. And is it in support of their strategy? Okay. So ERP systems, they answered that call in the marketplace by providing a different way of implementing and looking at the role of ERP in their business. Okay. So this obviously development of a vision of, of an integrated IS, information systems. In the past it was also Y2K issues. Oh, it's a long time ago. But that created a huge issue for ERP systems. Huge issue. And some ERP systems couldn't even mobilize in time, and so they died. So let's look at some other management factors. Compliance with the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. So in the United States, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002 was brought out to ensure that there were sufficient internal controls on, all, on, on the information and their processes. So let's unpack that. What do you think would happen once a new law, legislation, came out saying, your, you need to adequately provide to ensure that your business systems do in fact have the internal controls of information in accordance with Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Again, like Y2K, it created a requirement <coughs> for ERP systems to ensure that they had the functionality in order to support the, re the requirements as governed by Sarbanes-Oxley Act in the governance of business systems. So again, CISPRO had to ensure that that happened. And we had something called electronic signatures, which is a feature in the software, that allows us to actually implement we, uh, and, and security, etc., that, that conforms to that. In South Africa, we have something called the King 3 report. The King 3 report is the equivalent of the Sarbanes-Oxley. Um, and there, again, it stipulates that, uh, you know, IT, <coughs> for publicly listed companies in, 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 in particular required to conform to a whole lot of uh, things. Okay? <coughs> so just for you to understand some of the management factors which are driving the requirements of the development of, uh, of ERP and the scope as to what ERP systems need to offer. So if you have a look at this, this is uh, from Munk and Wagner uh, 2013. Um, and it's looking at information and material flows in a functional business model. So you've got information flow, and these are the silos, marketing, sales, manufacturing, logistics, finance, and control. And you can see how the material and production flow also occurs from that. Okay, so I'd just like to take a second and just to compare it to this slide. And here on this slide, what you can see, also from Munk and Wagner, 
is a process business model as opposed to a functional business model. And all this is saying, these two slides, is just for you to understand that this is this area here. So no longer we're looking at it as at a functional level, but we're looking at it as a business process. And the business process will cover a lot of different areas. So when we talk about a procure to pay cycle, which is a business process, we have procurement that has a demand. The demand has been driven from manufacturing or sales or a forecast or a plan. Okay? So then they purchase and then that has an impact on inventory, has an impact on manufacturing, has an impact on finance. So that is a business process that has an impact across multiple different functional areas in your business. It may affect operations. It may affect finance, it may affect planning, manufacturing, etc. Okay? So you can see now what you have is you what what companies are looking at now is they're saying, well, suppliers are integral to our business. No longer is my remit that I've got to try and extract blood from them. This is not true blood. This is a different TV series. I actually engage more into a partnership role in my supply chain. Because if it rains, we all get wet. Okay? And the same thing, I enter into, I'm not trying to extract blood from my customers either. I'm entering into a long-lasting relationship with them. There's been so many different studies on this. And all the studies have concluded that retaining your customers is the biggest contributor to your organization's long-term sustainability. So companies need that alignment with their suppliers and their customers because that is in fact comprises their complete supply and demand trading of exchange goods services in the marketplace. With that you have material and, and product flow which will cover suppliers, conversion, being production, storage, shipping and you have information flow which is moving across procurement, manufacturing, logistics. Now a lot of companies what they do is they place is the place um, operations management on top of that as the overarching hat that looks after all of those things. Then marketing and sales and you can see how the interaction of suppliers and accounts receivable filter into finance and accounting. But what you have here is actually on a strategic alignment of the functional, previous functional silos of information into the horizontal corporate strategy. So how does this translate to in real terms? In real terms is what you saw in companies, they said, look, what I'm going to do is I've got an in-tray and an out-tray. And what this person does is they process all of these things in this function into the in-tray. And by 3 o'clock, manufacturing comes and they deliver you all this paperwork. And it sits on your desk for two days and you process it. And then eventually it hits your out-tray. When it hits your out-tray, the next department comes and picks it up and they process it. Can you see how much lag and inefficiency I've added into that mix? But that's the reality. If I get my processes, my business processes to flow through my business, I'm increasing the velocity in the business, allowing me to convert my order to cash cycles faster. And if I can do that, I've got higher cash flow. Okay? I'm turning my stock more often. That's what I'm looking to do. And if I turn my stock more often, I can hold less and rather hold more of what I need to hold. 